car. The train is here. We're getting on the sleeper car. It's ready to go. Amtrak offers nine different types of sleeper accommodations on its long distance trains. In this video, we're going to look at the Superliner Roomette, including which trains have it, how much it costs, how it compares to other types of Amtrak rooms, and its features and amenities, or lack thereof. Hi, I'm still Jeremy. Let's take a tour of Amtrak's Superliner Roomette. All Amtrak trains have coach seating and people do sleep overnight in the seats. A Superliner Roomette is a small private compartment with two seats and it converts into two beds at night. Passengers in Superliner Roomettes use bathrooms and showers elsewhere in their train car. First of all, note that only long distance overnight trains offer any sleeping accommodations. Shorter day routes, like these, only offer seats. There are two basic categories of Amtrak sleeper accommodations. Viewliner rooms in blue and Superliner rooms in red. Viewliner rooms are only available on trains that pass through New York City and are on single level trains, while Superliner rooms are available on other overnight trains and are on double decker cars. Superliner roomettes are available on Auto Train, California Zephyr, Capital Limited, the City of New Orleans, Coast Starlight, Empire Builder, Southwest Chief, Sunset Limited, and Texas Eagle. Superliner roomettes are the only types of accommodation available on both the upper and lower levels of Amtrak's double-decker trains. Upper-level roomettes have nicer views but can bounce back and forth more due to the motion of the train. Lower level roomettes are more stable but are closer to the tracks and might be noisier. Personally, I think the sounds of the train at night are something to be enjoyed. If you're the same, then the sound might not be a problem for you. But I like the upper level views better. Either way, Amtrak generally wants to get you your desired room, so when making a reservation, you can just ask for whichever level you want. Even if you can't get it, ask the staff once you board and they may be able to change your room for you. Of the five types of Superliner compartments, the roomette is the simplest, with just the two seats, the two beds, and some minor features I'll go over later. The Superliner bedroom has two beds, plus an extra seat and a private shower and toilet. Amtrak says it's good for two to three people, somehow. I think they mean the third sleeps in the seat. The bedroom suite is just two bedrooms with the partition removed between them, so you get double of everything. The Superliner family bedroom has four beds, two adult and two child, but no private facilities. Finally, the Superliner accessible bedroom is on the lower level, sleeps two adults, and is big enough to fit a wheelchair and has private facilities separated by a curtain. One note about Superliner roomette versus Viewliner roomette. The Viewliner roomette has two windows, including one for the upper bed, while the Superliner roomette just has the one window that unfortunately can't be seen from the upper bed. So, the Superliner Roomette is the smallest of the accommodations, but as we'll soon see, also the cheapest, and you have a choice about the level you want to stay on. Plus, sitting in the Roomette seat in the daytime and watching the scenery pass by is awesome. Seats face each other, so if you're traveling as a pair, you'll get to argue about who gets which seat. If you're traveling alone, and I've seen many solo passengers with a Superliner Roomette, well, the world is yours. Between the two seats in a Superliner Roomette, there's a fold-down table which is good for snacks and drinks like the free Amtrak water, or a computer or a book, or for playing checkers thanks to the little board engraved on the plastic, or chess if you're feeling especially erudite on your Amtrak trip. You have to bring your own game pieces though. There's a small closet good enough for two or maybe three coats or jackets. There's also a little coat hook that you can pull down from the wall. In the daytime, sitting in the seats, your suitcases may fit on the floor beside your feet, or if especially small, on the armrest beside you. Otherwise, you can put your bags in the storage area on the lower level of your car, and have more room for your feet and the slippers that you stole from Delta. Each seat has separate controls for lights and air conditioner. On a trip I took recently on the Empire Builder, my temperature controls didn't seem to do anything, not the mini vent nor the one on the ceiling, nor did the music control. The air felt fine though, and the personal lights both worked. And one side had a power outlet. I used it to power the dash cam I brought so I could capture some of the scenery out the window. The roomette also has a night light, a pale bluish one, that you can turn on or off. It's brighter for the top bunk than the bottom. And speaking of the night light, let's talk about the Superliner roomette beds. 
Making the beds is simple. The two seats in the Superliner roomette slide down and meet in the middle. On top of that, you place a thin mattress and a pillow and a blanket, and there's one bed. The top bed is just unlatched and pulled down horizontal, and it locks into place. It has the same mattress, pillow, and blanket. Your Amtrak car attendant, who has certainly already introduced him or herself, will be happy to do all the bed conversions for you. I personally like doing it myself. It's like setting up a campsite, sort of. To get up to the top bed, there's a step and then the armrest to climb up. There's a net on the open side to prevent you from rolling out at night. The space in the top bed is pretty tight, with no window and the ceiling right over you. It might feel a little claustrophobic to some, but this is where the gentle rhythm of the train at night comes in, to lull you off to sleep. As I mentioned, the door latches and you can draw the curtain across it at night to prevent people in the hallway from seeing in. Here's what it looks like from the hallway. You can leave the window curtain open if you want, but on the lower deck of the train, this means that people on platforms at night might be able to see into your room. This wouldn't be an issue on the top deck of the train. If you're traveling solo, of course, you just leave the top bed folded up and you have even more room for yourself at night. Both beds in the Superliner roomette are 2 feet 4 inches wide or 72 centimeters. The bottom bed is longer, 6 feet 6 inches, and the upper bed is 6 feet 2 inches, 200 and 190 centimeters respectively. If the train is arriving at your station early in the morning, you can ask the staff for a wake-up knock. This is less necessary in the age of cell phones with their own alarms, but if you want to do it old school, you have the option. Speaking of waking up, one of the key benefits for staying in a Superliner roomette, or any sleeping accommodation, is that breakfast and all your meals are free. For as long as you're on the train, you have your choice of whatever breakfast, lunches, and dinners are on offer. As a lover of Amtrak food, I think of this as a major benefit of Amtrak sleeping accommodations. Passengers in coach seats have to pay extra for each meal. And all passengers in a private room or not have to pay for snacks from the cafe. Which brings us to... What does a Superliner roomette cost? Well, it depends on the route, the days you're traveling, and even the direction you're going. Plus, there are discounts for certain people, but also add-ons you may want. How it basically works is that you pay one price for the roomette itself, and then each of the one or two passengers pays a fare on top of that. And you are limited to two passengers in the Superliner roomette. All the prices depend on the route. Let's look at some examples. Keep in mind that these are only examples, valid as of the time I'm making this video, and you'll need to check the Amtrak website yourself with your actual dates and plans to get the real prices that you'll pay. But this will give you an idea of how the prices compare. So all on the same week, about two months from now, here are the prices of a single passenger in a Superliner roomette on all available Amtrak routes. Auto train from Washington DC to Orlando is $296 plus the $208 for your car. The other direction, going north, is $3 less. California Zephyr from Chicago to San Francisco is $894, but only $547 going the other direction from San Francisco. Capital Limited from DC to Chicago is $310 in either direction. The City of New Orleans between New Orleans and Chicago is $312 in either direction. Coast Starlight from LA up to Seattle is $500 even, but only $419 from north to south. Empire Builder is $900 from Chicago out to Seattle, and just $742 going from Seattle the other way. Southwest Chief between Chicago and LA is $604 in either direction. Sunset Limited is $492 from LA to New Orleans, but $605 from New Orleans to LA. Finally, Texas Eagle is $604 from Chicago to LA, and a whopping $1,003 from LA to Chicago. Remember that the number of nights on these services vary, so that explains a lot of the price differences. Prices can also change based on when you're traveling. Look at that $312 Superliner roomette from Chicago to New Orleans. It's the same whether I look at it tomorrow or a month from now. Nine months from now, though, the price is up to $410. Eleven months from now, which is the limit that you can book on Amtrak's website, it's back down to $363. This example isn't too dramatic, but I've seen differences of several hundred dollars for a Superliner roomette on some of the longer routes, just two or three months apart. Now, how does the Superliner roomette price compare with other sleeping accommodations on the same train? Let's look at that same Chicago to New Orleans trip for one person tomorrow, which was $312. The family bedroom for one person, which would be weird, is $407. The bedroom with the in-room toilet and shower is $431 and the wheelchair accessible bedroom is the cheapest at $280.80. 
Finally, there are occasional sales and promotions, and seniors, active military, and veterans get a discount on most routes. On the Chicago to New Orleans trip, for example, all of those are $294.50 instead of $312. Children from 2 to 12 pay half fare, and infants under 2 travel free. If you want to travel with a bicycle or a pet, those will add a few dollars to your ticket too. When you factor in the comfort of the bed over the coach seat, plus the free meals and the privacy, a Superliner roommate can actually be a pretty good deal, especially if it's split between two people. Just check the Amtrak website and get the real story for your trip's prices. So that wraps up our tour of Amtrak Superliner Roomette sleeper accommodations. It's a step up from sleeping in coach seats because you can lie down and have privacy and all your meals are included. Of course, the space is small and during the day many find that hanging out in the much roomier observation car is more fun. Most passengers actually probably go back and forth. You have the time on Amtrak to relax and hang out wherever you want, whenever you want. Overall, I've enjoyed my times in Superliner Roomettes. I like the amenities and sense of personal space and will certainly use them in the future. Thanks for watching. Check out my other videos for travel tips, stories from my own travels, and my experiences as a type 1 diabetic wanderer. See you on the rails.